encouraging kids to get involved. And I've been to Estonia to see what they've been doing there and what it is about their approach which so appeals to many experts here. Tallinn doesn't look high-tech. Parts of Estonia's capital are 900 years old, but appearances can deceive. When it comes to embracing technology early, Estonia's been showing the way. It's 9am at the Pelgolina Gymnasium, a Tallinn state school, and for these seven- and eight-year-olds, it's time for robotics. It teaches them that everything is programmable. Our goal is to give them experience uh, what is the future light will be because they are the inventors of the future. Are you, are you enjoying this lesson? Is it good fun? Kas tele meeldib see tuntena? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They are saying that it's uh, very interesting and uh, they can uh, think, they use their brain. As in many Estonian schools, children here don't just use computers, they are taught their language. This class is generating QR codes for use with smartphones. Some of these kids are just seven and introducing them to smartphones at such a young age, is, it's, it's, it's very early, isn't it? When they are going to the kindergarten, they already have smartphones. When they come to school, everybody has smartphones. We, we should teach them to do it properly. Schools in Estonia have been online since the late 1990s. The idea of teaching young kids programming was embraced here earlier and more wholeheartedly than in many other countries. And this digital drive hasn't just come from teachers or IT companies, it's come from the very top. The president himself. Thomas Hendrik Ilves was a government minister in the 1990s who foresaw the digital revolution early. I started pushing for interneting all of the schools, getting all schools connected and with computers, which came out of my own experience. I had a fantastic mathematics teacher who taught a small group of us in my school uh, to program in 1968. In the UK, amongst many parents, there's this fear, I think it's fair to say, about how much digital time kids should have. Do you think that fear is misplaced? Well, I don't know what the average amount of time spent watching television is in the UK, but certainly that's strictly passive. Far happier to see children uh, interacting uh, with uh, computers than I am to see children watching television. Cambridge-based Eben Upton launched the Raspberry Pi two years ago a low-cost computer aimed at encouraging children to program. He believes the new computing curriculum for English schools, with its emphasis on programming, is long overdue. We've had a real focus on teaching people how to be computer users. We've been teaching people how to use office applications. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that is important. That those are skills that people are going to need in their daily lives. But what we're not teaching children, what we haven't been teaching children, are those high-value skills, how to actually uh, produce something with a machine rather than just consuming something that other people have produced. Estonia's most famous digital success is Skype. Set up 10 years ago, it's transformed global communication. In Estonia's classrooms, the digital entrepreneurs of tomorrow are already learning their trade. Obviously, Estonia has a much smaller population than the UK, so it could be argued it's easier to implement change, even so many would like schools here to follow that kind of idea. Now, Stephen, you've been running the coding club here, haven't you? How ready are schools, do you think, for these changes? Well, we've been working with schools in Birmingham for about three years and across the country for about five years now, looking at all the elements of the new computing curriculum a wee bit ahead of the game. So there is computer science, which is coding, but there's also digital literacy and information technology. And obviously those schools who have looked at it earlier, they'll find the transition in September to the new computing curriculum a wee bit easier. What to. about the schools which haven't they? Um, the sooner they can look at it, the better. You know, they should, they could invest in it. Um, some schools I know finance is a bit of a problem, and it would be nice if they could get a wee bit more support, looking at better infrastructure and having the, the computer systems and being able to get people in who can help them with their training. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Well, the coding club here has been very, very popular. Let's have a quick chat to some of the members now. Fifa, have you enjoyed the coding club? If so, why? Um, yeah, I've enjoyed it because we learned how to program and it's really fun and it'll help us when we get to secondary school. OK, good for you, good to hear. How about you, Yassine? Do you think it's more interesting than just playing a game? It's understanding how to create one of your own? I think it's better to understand how to create a game because if, you, if you're playing on a game, you won't know how the people created it and if you want to learn how to do it, this is a great club to come to. OK, 
Okay, it was very interesting stuff. I'll let you guys carry on. Well, um, in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales, there's recognition how important programming is. No plans to introduce it into the curriculum there yet. In England, that will be happening in September. So children as young as five in English primary schools will be taught how to program from September. It is hoped that it will prepare them more effectively for their futures, which will, of course, be dominated by digital technology. OK, Tim, thanks. Will you thank the, the children for turning out so early for us as well? Brilliant. I work. will do. I will All do. Right. Thank yes. you, guys, from Bill in the studio.